good Sunday morning. I'm relaxing by the pool and thinking about lock-in, AWS, contingency plans. So the way I write my software that gets to Hi from the future. So the reason why I make videos is to encourage debate. I really love your comments. And that video I made by the pool is pretty one-sided. I'm just basically bitching about step functions and how they lead to lock-in. Now, step functions have their place, I feel. And I think the, the pros of them is that you get a nice illustrated, clear cut flow diagram. And um, even in my trivial type of functions, I feel that sometimes you need to tell people how it works just for maintainability or what have you. And, and drawing a flow diagram from an existing function is kind of painful. I don't know a good way of doing it. I mean, you know, getting out of x-ray service map or any way really doesn't really make, it's not a lot of joy. There's no automated way of doing it. But if you do it in a double step function, you get an awesome, awesome, beautiful, you know, flow diagram of how your program works. Furthermore, if your, pro if your business process um, has, has steps that need human, I don't know, check offs, so this bit of waiting time or something like that, step functions is your best bet. It really is like for this sort of, that, that, that sort of flow. And it does have all these advantages to like having all these like ways of queuing and, and seeing the errors and things like this, which is kind of missing from a general purpose language. So anyway, I got some great uh, tweets, as you can see here. Um, you know, it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. And every, every I don't know, architecture or technology decision is a trade-off. So this is why I make these videos, guys. So enjoy the rest of me by the full side. Have a great weekend. Bye. On AWS Cloud, it can easily sort of be dockerized or, you know, the, the binary can be shipped off and run. And I use HT I'm very careful to use HTTP interfaces everywhere, right? I'm conscious of every AWS SD, SDK call. Everything should be HTTP and mockable and all the rest of it. Now, there's been a lot of improvements to step functions and I just, this tweet tw triggered me. You know, the ideal serverless function is a pure function. It doesn't call a service. You use, you know, step functions to to uh, coordinate your business and, and do everything. It's the perfect no-code solution and all that jazz. I mean, hello, if you use step functions, if you go all in on this stuff, you're basically giving up a, like a, a general programming language like Go or JavaScript, and you're basically binding yourself to their interfaces. And I just think it's absolutely ludicrous. What? Why is anybody speaking out and saying like, no, don't do that. Otherwise, it's like literally impossible to move your business process off AWS. It's a great no code solution you know it makes it easy for people to you know cobble together something but if you're not cobbling it together in in a, in a general purpose language and you, and you can't run it locally i just think you, you're just getting yourself you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot i'm sorry just keep to http interfaces and speaking of http interfaces there's a, a blogger came across which is quite interesting okay there's a whole bunch of cloud formation and boring boring but what's interesting about this is that AWS queues or SQS are undeniably useful, but ideally you're not having your code to, to bind to that, that SQS interface. With this little snippet of CloudFormation, you're essentially using an API gateway to pass that message onto a queue. So it's just a neat little trick so that your code essentially is still HTTP based, but you get to use a queue. Isn't that awesome? So, good day from the pool, and um, have a relaxing Sunday without selling your soul. Learn a proper programming language, a proper editor, and don't get locked in too badly. Have a contingency plan. Chill a bit, guys. Please like the video.